Hey. Hey. I was kind of wondering where everybody was. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh gosh, it's just me and Ed. But Ed's always, you know, he's always good. Yeah. Um, let me do a gallery view. Okay. I've moved to my, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How are things? Ed, you're on mute. Good year. There you go. How was Kansas? What you say? Oh, Kansas was great. I I what? was I honestly did not want to leave. I I I loved it there. Wait, now you were in the wait. What you were in the university town? What is it? Yeah, Lawrence. It's not that the university oh, town was so great. We drove through the countryside to go to a farm, and it was an hour and a half of driving on no interstates. The countryside is gorgeous, and really, I I am. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's nice yeah. in Virginia and Maryland, but I'm from the Midwest, and I just prefer that whole. Yeah, uh, I just I loved it there. It I looked mean, beautiful in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it was gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, and it was it was really nice. I I mean, well, that's it, great. Yeah. Anyway, um, exceeded expectations. Nice, isn't that all? Is is you live there, or you're wait, what was it? What's that? Have you lived there, or we just visited? No, there? I don't have anything. There. Oh, okay. okay. No, oh, I visited. No, but I was I was in 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 I was in Wichita, which is the opposite of what you're oh. talking about. Yeah. No, I mean, I you know there is nothing good to get about Wichita. Things, but we weren't really. It was no. just. I loved the uh, the flora. I was getting confused. I I just <laughs> I love that look. The Midwest. Oh, uh, that's great. That's just awesome. Yeah. Anyway, no, I would. I had to go. You said to go to Wichita because I used to do a lot of work for companies in the aircraft industry. Oh, okay. Construction, oh, and they, okay. they used to have a big aircraft industry there. I don't. I, don't, I think it's all gone. I don't even know what part of Kansas is Wichita in. Is it in the middle or west or something? In the middle. Yeah, I think it's the middle. <laughs> yeah. Hi, <laughs> um, Hi, Julie. Hello. I've got I've got to warn all of you that I'm I'm gonna be I gotta you guys have been doing all the work since the last minute I gotta rely on all of you to really give the report. Okay. Well, Ed, Ed, but where were you? Yes, I will. I will. You didn't. You asked me. I didn't respond. I will comment on what I did. Whatever. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. Your com your conversation with Michael Gouin. Gouin. Michael Gouin. Yeah. And Ed, where were you that you were driving? Oh me. Yeah. God, I've been all over the place. And then, um, oh, well, actually, well, we're at the beach. We've been at the beach a couple of times. And where else were we going? I think it must have been the beach. I think so. And then we get to leave tomorrow at 430 in the morning to take my youngest down to Virginia Tech, drive him down to Blacksburg. Is that his yeah. first time or is that just, I mean, is he going no, yeah, we're dropping him off for his freshman year. My wow. oldest son graduated from there. Now my youngest is going there. Oh. Which is so weird because my dad went there, this Jewish kid from Long Island went there in like 40. <laughs> and it's so ironic that two of my boys have, uh, are now going. Yeah, he went, yeah, you're laughing, Julie. He had this Jewish kid from Long Island goes down to Blackford, Virginia, because it was all military at the time. And we were in. Oh, I can imagine. Thought then he would come out as an officer, which which he did. But yeah. Anyway. My daughter left today for Miami. Oh, uh, she did. Oh, oh yeah, her year. Yeah. This is not her first year though, because she was there before. That, right? Yeah, it's her junior year. Yeah, she was, and she's all better now. She had COVID, but she's all better. She's all right? better. My son is also better from COVID, and he's leaving uh, Thursday for Connecticut. Okay. So directions, yeah. Fingers where crossed. Does, where does he go? Uh, Connecticut College. Oh, in that's London. a great place. Yeah, that's a great place. So yeah, okay. Well, shall we? Oh, there's Brian, Susanna. Who am I missing? Mm -hmm. Who else is here? Um, Julie. We Julie have Abrams both Julie. Okay, Julie Abrams. So we're we're oh Jan's in New Mexico. Jan's so. in New Mexico, right? Yeah, okay. so she probably won't be on. Michael, Michael, is Michael here? So Michael, I think we're here. Done. Um, Michael Rourke is off the committee, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Um, all righty. So let's get started. Um, I was going to say that a lot of um, new information sort of was discovered by members of the committee in the last um, 
couple of weeks. So we've got a lot of um, information to go to go through new information. So it's great. So let's um, let's start with the uh, rules uh, committee. Yeah, thanks, Alan. So as I was saying, like, every, you know, uh, everyone but me has been doing a lot of work while I do is uh, read the emails and attend one meeting. Um, so I'm really appreciative of the heavy lift by everyone. But I, I think and and jump tell me if if I'm missing um, something, but I think the first place to start is maybe with the interim code proposal. Uh, I sent around a summary of our meeting with Doug Lohmeyer, who is both the, the Somerset town engineer and also uh, is on the uh, unfortunately named water board for the town of Chevy Chase. So um, as I mentioned in the email, the impetus for the meeting was um, that we had heard through the grapevine that he had some concerns about the 2.6 inch one year storm event standard that um, we had baked into the proposed interim code. Um, Julie made short work of getting him comfortable with that. Um, didn't really seem um, to take too long. Gee, just to um, be confirmed. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then we talked about other issues, including you know, getting his thoughts generally on process, what has to be done to get the, um, the applicants um, to connect with us from uh, the outset, i.e. when they connect with the county. We talked about that. And I think the takeaway from that is, um, you know, uh, we're really going to have to rely on word of mouth and educating uh, all stakeholders uh, in, in the field to let applicants know they really do need to connect with Somerset at the very beginning of the time when they connect with the county. And so that's going to mean educating the realtors and the architects and the builders and, you know, every and the county and very importantly, the county to send them our way. So I think those are like the, the big takeaways from the meeting with Doug. And then um, really big event. Um, it just happened yesterday as Julie uh, sat in on the town council meeting where our interim proposal was discussed. And so Julie, you wanna, let me turn it over to you. Yeah, so this was the work session. Uh, you know, so there's no audience participation. They had multiple topics. This was stuck in the middle. Um, but I think it's very reassuring that we have a very, serious town council that is really trying to grapple with the facts and um, understand what they're doing. They, it, it, I was very impressed. And I think the bottom line from the discussion is that they pretty much uh, accepted, and this is when I say they, I mean primarily the, the leading council members in this at this point are um, Robin Barr and Kamir Kubar, um, that they are sort of taking the lead on the technical examination and talking to people and bringing information back to the council. Um, so they've pretty much come to the point of accepting that as an interim um, code change, what we've proposed um, in terms of the roof runoff and driveways is good. They have come up with a different, uh, with the same intent, a different wording and approach to the processing so that um, there's concurrent review essentially with the county and Ron Bolt has come up with the actual language to make it concurrent. And this is what apparently we found out at the meeting with Doug that, that Ed was talking about, that amazingly enough of the nine jurisdictions that Doug has had or continues to have some kind of consulting engineering relationship with on building permits, we are the only jurisdiction that does not do concurrent review, that has its, its review at the end of the road when nothing can be changed. This is uh, flabbergasting to say the least. Yeah, um, such a compelling fact yeah. for, it, it makes such a compelling case for what we're doing here. 
Right. And be, yeah, helpful to bring to the community's attention. Sorry, yeah. Matt. So yeah, that's great. So the points of contention are we're only what goes into this code change, which probably will be introduced at the um, September meeting, sort of to put it on the agenda for public comment at the subsequent, you know, uh, subsequent October meeting. Um, the will be essentially what we proposed. Some other issues came up in discussion, like whether there should be a bifurcated process where essentially only applications in, that are asking for a variance come before the council and other applications need not be considered by the council so that there's an incentive for applicants to not ask for a variance. Um, and I think that's going to be table, that's going to be postponed until they consider our um, final recommendations, but there was strong recommendation that we do include that kind of bifurcated process. They, there were a few other comments about things they want us to include like soil tests or perk tests. Um, they really want us to think about some kinds of um, permeable caps on permeable, total permeable impervious surface. There are a few other things that they're sort of throwing into this grab bag of please consider this and bring it back to us. Um, but bottom line, um, they understand and we're talking among themselves about what I think is one of the most important concepts that we are striving for them to see, which is that what they want to do is use regulation to encourage the types of design changes that will be fine, you know, that the applicant will be able to make early on and still accomplish the public purpose of the regulation. And that they see that that is what they do want to do. They're not seeing these as sort of cut and dried regulations that um, they use in a sort of uh, heavy handed way. It's more, let's work together and get design changes because I think that is understanding that that is the key that, you know, unless you can sort of say to an applicant, gee, you know, your patio might be better over there for purposes of runoff and would that be okay? Well, that's okay, good. So let's have the patio over there. That's the sort of thing that's gonna get you the, the final goal, which is, holding on to runoff from a one year rainfall event. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I came away feeling, wow, we actually have a functional uh, process here and they are looking to us for additional um, recommendations for sure. I mean, I think they're actually, their, their um, hopes and dreams for what we're gonna come up with as a final recommendation are quite lofty. Um, they, they really want us to come through, but they are, you know, they've, they've sort of, um, they, they see the, purpose of what we've recommended so far. So I think it's a very promising um, promising progress. That sounds great, Julie. Uh, just quick question, just um, so some of their asks uh, that, that they're mentioning like the impermeable, is that for the interim code, not just the lofty later or? No, that's lofty later. Oh, it is lofty later. Yeah, okay. yeah. Good. Basically, yeah, if any, yeah, at this point there, um, any suggestion that they add on more to this was sort of, no, let's, let's wait on that. That was a response, yeah. Great, great. Well, that is very encouraging, Julie. I have to say, um, you know, this meeting with Doug Lohmeyer, I was just really impressed with Kamir and how he ran that meeting. He- Yeah, he's, yeah, I've worked with him professionally. Uh, he's worked in a couple places I've worked, and so I've worked with him somewhat, not extensively. Yeah. And he's a really sharp, good guy. Very, really yeah, just, yeah, tip top. Yeah, yeah. He seems like a great yeah. addition to the council. And Julie, and what? what oh, issue. Sorry. And Julie, can you go through kind of what we think the timetable is when they will actually um, be adopting? You know, what I mean, are we talking about three months? More? No, I think if it's entered, <laughs> there's, you can't um, adopt something until 60 days, I think it is after it's sort of put on the council agenda. So introduce it in, in September, consider it in October, and then it could be implemented. The earliest could be November is my understanding of the timetable. Ooh, our one year anniversary. 
<laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah. And they do have to let the council know that the county council, um, but there's a 30 day or some, there's some time period they have to let the county mm -hmm. council know, but it's a pro, sort of pro forma. There's, there's no, there's no approval process by the county council. So. And that's after we introduce it. So at that September meeting, then is that was it? Uh, no, I don't. I think it was actually adoption, or oh, okay. yeah, I wasn't paying the closest. But they don't have veto power. The There's no veto power. You said yeah. no. Good. Okay. It's kind of like trees. Their neighbors have to sign off, but no decision making right. authority. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, if we can move along, uh, Julie, do you want to talk at all about um, Chevy Chase Section Five? Well, I just wanted to mention that um, because Chevy Chase Section 5 came up with this in, the, in that same meeting with Doug, um, and Doug said that they had been, they regulate all impervious surface in all building, all additions in all built building permits, no size limit. I thought, well, I should check that out. And um, I did a sort of preliminary talk uh, just you know, sort of off the cuff with the town manager. And um, she described that they've had this for years. Um, they changed in 2017 to a uh, more, I would say, um, uh, e expansive notion of handling drainage rather than requiring that all impervious surfaces be permeable. Um, but I think it's something we need to examine further because it deals with this issue of um, what applies to everybody, not just new homes. Remember our code change is only new homes and we still have this big unexplored territory of, well, what about everybody else who gets a building permit and does anything that affects runoff? How do we handle that? And, and um, their process is, you know, uh, much less involved, I must say, than Town of Chevy Chase. So it has um, it it has that that speaks favorably towards it, since we are they're about half the size of Somerset. Um, but on, like Town of Chevy Chase, their town council plays no role in approvals, and it's all handled by a consulting engineer who signs off on everything, um, all the way up to new homes. So it's, um, you know, there, there's just something there to be sort of factored in as we consider these other jurisdictions, administrative burdens, who does what, just another variation, but it has some appeal because it, it's really basic. There's no calculation. It's just take care of the water. And um, who pays for it, um, the time of the engineer? It's a town that's paying, I think, though there, there are fees. I didn't get, that was, since this is just sort of, I think we're going back to the town manager. She's very, very nice and very um, happy to answer questions. Um, I'm sure there is a fee. I don't know if it pays the full cost, but he spends quite a bit of time because he's doing the, the whole nine yards. Okay. From concept yeah. to approval. I have not, I haven't had a chance to look at their code, but I will, I will do that. Yeah, I attached to relevant. I, I, parts see, I saw that. I, saw sure. that. I, I will do that. And maybe what we can do um, is then circulate a summary. And Ellen, I liked your idea also of doing a table with the relevant yeah. provisions um, so that we've got, you know, something neat and handy to compare the provisions. And so we, we can think about I don't know, maybe we can even, uh, maybe we can think about this, maybe we can do like pros and cons of, of, of the approaches. Um, or maybe we do that once we get the... But some of this is just getting the verbatim code so that if we, you know, if we like it, we can wholesale import or pro con it and say, we like this, but not that. So it's yeah, either verbatim or we summarize it uh, mm -hmm. for purposes of, of just of, of the table. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful also for the members of the council and as, as well as ourselves yeah. to kind of look mm -hmm. at them side by side and do some comparisons. And um, so we should think about, you know, the things that we are looking to do in our proposal 
and make sure that we've looked at if those things exist in those, at least in those two communities and um, how they're actually um, implementing them. So like in terms of who's paying, um, whether it's a decision by the council or the town engineer yeah. or whomever, that kind of stuff, just so that, um, you know, that I think would be very helpful. So that'd be great. I'd be happy to help um, figure that out. Yeah, maybe we could think about how to organize in kind of a functional way, kind of like, you know, key substantive provisions, decision makers, cost, you know, who bears the cost, and maybe there's one or two other categories that yeah. are really mm -hmm. relevant. I and maybe the functional did, areas topical is like subdivided by topic, some key topic. Yeah, I think if we did what you're talking about, the table might be easier later. I think it's hard to start with. I was I was trying to think of what questions yeah. and what things. I think it's probably better to you know list what each um, community has, how it's organized, how it's paid for, how big it is, um, what they uh, regulate and what you know what they don't regulate, and then we could probably figure out a table that might be um, useful. The yeah, maybe that, the, maybe my thought is, maybe that's a kind of a derivative. Yeah. Of that, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, anything yeah. else from that committee? The, well, the other thing is um, highest conversation with Michael Gouin from uh, the chair of the, uh, um, of the water board. Okay. I should say hi and Susanna, Sorry, Susanna you were on the Suddenly had technical difficulties when you called on me. Um, what'd you say, Ed? Yeah. I, I just mentioned Susanna was on that call as well. Right, Susanna was on the call as well. Um, so I, the, the bottom line is, well, the first thing to say is that there wasn't that much new information because I've talked to, we previously talked to someone else on the board as well as to the town manager person in charge of uh, permit permits, but, um, I'm just gonna, and I put the notes out there. I guess I didn't put them out. Well, they're on they're on the website. I mean, they're on the Google Drive, but um, the highlights are that, um, so first of all, Doug Lohmeyer is on their board and I didn't quite realize this, but he is like, there's three people on the water board. Two of them are citizens and one of them is Doug Lohmeyer and he is paid for his time, I guess. And- Is that Ron Bolt also on that? No, maybe yeah. sure. I don't know. There's I think maybe he's. I think he's their lawyer too. Yeah, I think well, he, he is. might be. But Doug Lomar sits on the board. He has a vote on the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Ron is also at all the meetings. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, they didn't mention him. Um, yeah, they said, did. I, now I remember because he they would ask Ron to write up the decisions. I think. Oh, okay. So he That's was saying right. that they needed legal legal write-ups for the decisions, like they yeah. were legal documents. Yeah. Said. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay. I didn't know the name of the person. Um, he said that the main thing, I mean, Gouin is a, a professional like nuclear arms negotiator. Susanna loved this. She was asking him about what he, he, was, he worked awesome. with Kissinger apparently. Um, so, uh, which gives you some idea of his age, which is, you know, kind of like ancient, but anyway, um, he really has a background in negotiations and he was saying that the, the main point of this committee is negotiation and like trying to figure out, you know, I mean, obviously there's also technical stuff from the engineers, but the, for at least his role was to try to negotiate and get people to, you know, come together. Um, he said that by and large, um, the variant, so most of the, I think most of the, um, permit requests don't even go to, they don't even have variance requests. So most of them are just done correctly. The ones that do have variances requests, he said, most of them, um, a lot of them, they hadn't done their homework. In other words, they just hadn't done what they were supposed to do. I mean, be, to, they didn't really look at what the regulations were, but he said that in most case, they would come, you know, the board could suggest some solutions. And um, they were, only a few, how can I say this? Um, yeah, and um, that um, he just said, in the, another thing, the bottom line was that sometimes he felt like the houses were just too big. And he was saying, I believe that the houses were too big, so you had to give a variance. We're not sure, if we're thinking like maybe if the house is too big, we said you can't build such a big house. So that's, that's another thing that's something to consider. 
Um, the only other, the one other interesting thing, and maybe there's other things, but this is what I thought was most interesting was that he mentioned that rain gardens are not part of their plans because they did some research and determined that they're just mosquito breeding grounds. Um, and I told this to Julie G today and she was like, I have a rain garden and it, it drains in 24 hours, which it's supposed to do. And so mosquitoes don't breed there. So if you have a rain garden food, and this is what they were telling us before, but if you have, you need to have, um, what do you call that? Per, uh, soil drainage. Per, uh, I forgot what the word is. Percolating. Per, Percolation. Has to per? Yeah. Yeah. Perk need to percolate in order to be have uh, right pass the perk test in order to have a rain garden. If it doesn't pass the perk test, then you can't have a rain garden because if you do, then you're going to have mosquitoes. So uh, anyway, really glad yeah. you found that out. That's actually in the code that they don't consider rain gardens to be one of the tools that you can use. Um, you don't get credit for a rain garden. Hmm. That's right in the code. <clears throat> so I guess I guess they're concerned about mosquitoes, and that's why. Another. I think that's really outdated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, that was that was basically, a, you know, a summary of of what we talked about. Um, but, yeah. He didn't have like when we asked him the question, "What is the one thing you would change?" He, he didn't. He didn't really know. It was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, he felt like the water board was a successful tool, you know, for for dealing with 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 issues. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he you know, said most people most people will do the right thing, and you're you know, sorry, where you're going to get one or two that you know just are difficult like yeah right yeah i wonder if they have a succession plan yeah. <laughs> what did you say julie i wonder if they have a succession plan for the here. next gen <laughs> yeah. next water board members i don't know well i michael was saying that he thought he was off the board now that he had gotten i mean he still shows up on the website but he wasn't even sure if he's still running the board <laughs> so I think that they might, it actually says his term ends in 2021. So it might be that they just sent him a notice saying, you know, there's someone else, but yeah. Has he been on it? Do you get a sense of what, how long oh, he's been on it? From the beginning, right? From the beginning? I think so, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I had to sneeze. <laughs> yes, from the beginning. He was there from the very beginning, which uh, he was saying was the 1990s, which is not correct, but that's, I think he's, okay. his mind has been a long time. <laughs> he's been there, yeah. he's been in charge from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed that he didn't give his thoughts on what he would change, especially with regard to, you know, not have, you know, uh, giving them the authority to limit the, the size of a house or oh. at least capping the impermeable surfaces because so, you know, he mentioned well, some of that. He did mention that. It, maybe it didn't occur to him that that was something you could change, but that he didn't yeah. mention that as a problem. No, yeah. what he's, yeah, what he's, the way he addressed that is we wrote the code in this way to require, you know, this absorption to offset, you know, this many, you know, this much impervious surface. And in the beginning, people thought it was a way, it was sort of a backhanded way to limit the size of the right. houses. And it right. became like a political thing. Mm. And um, is that right, Hi, if, the, I if I remember I correctly? That, but that might be true. So people- you know, And so they were very distrustful of the guidelines in the beginning because they thought it was an attack on the bigger houses. Right. Um, and oh, they had to keep is, saying, yeah, that. they yeah. have to keep saying, no, 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 it is what it is, what it is. Like, don't right. make it what it's not, so. Right. Um, when in the yeah. beginning they had a lot more like they had a lot more action than they do now there was I guess there was a whole thing 10 years ago or whatever it was that there was a lot of activity and rebuilds and stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and I think that for meta the big takeaway for all of this and Julie and Ed touched on it which is the concurrent review but really getting the word out that we have an ordinance and from the word go before you meet with your architect before you meet with anybody you know you, you have to understand that there's this plan there there the, there are these requirements and you know there are engineers that can work with you and however we can sort of so i think in tandem with doing any regs we have to kind of do a big pr thing to let them know yeah i think 
Yeah. But that's because otherwise you're going to hit this wall with people going, well, I didn't know. Why, why are you telling me now? In any of the conversations that you all had with uh, Town of Chevy Chase, um, did they explain how they um, educated, you know, their people, uh, builders, architects, et cetera? Or is it that people now, because they've had these rules in place for so long, now understand it? Or did they actually go through any kind of education process? I don't think they mentioned we didn't, education process. We didn't ask. I, yeah. We didn't, honestly, that's an excellent question. Like, what was their PR campaign? <laughs> we I, didn't I feel ask. Like we did ask, but it would have come up. But I, I, they did say that there are certain builders, and I might have mentioned this at the last meeting, like certain builders who just won't work there, but other people who kind of know what's going on. So there's like a handful of engineers. Um, I, there, I, you know, I, I think that they, they had a... No, go ahead, Julie. I, I think they had a one year moratorium in in town of Chevy Chase. I mean, that's this is a vague recollection and that that probably set the word out pretty well. Reset button. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, 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 want, I mean, I'm curious as whether the, the county is actually notifying applicants just informally, by the way, you need to check in with the town. Hmm. Probably. I mean, I wouldn't assume, I, I mean, it sounds like we would want to do a big PR and re-education behavioral mod kind of, you know, just, you know, getting the word out in all sorts of creative and fun ways. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think including for that. people new buying houses who don't live here yet. That'd be ultra because you know, in town you're here, but if you're buying a house and you haven't moved in yet, you know, getting those folks and then that's the builders and the, uh, you know, various folks too. Yeah, I mean, the same time, I mean, I, I think it would give us a lot of comfort. We know that the county is, in fact, sending Town of Chevy Chase applicants to the town. That would be great um, that we could rely on that. But yeah, I agree. We still want to educate mm -hmm. everyone um, so that, you know, they, the, the realtors, the arch, at least because the arch, we don't want the realtors and architects and builders caught off guard. I mean, the moratorium is kind of an interesting concept, right? To <clears throat> freeze frame so that it just gives everyone a chance to be aware. And I mean, I don't know if that's something we would consider. But it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you guys, uh, I, I feel like I asked them that question, but I don't have an answer to it. So if there's other things we should ask, I can just email these guys, you know, and they said they would respond. I mean, you know, they're still there for us. So we, what are some things like, uh, if someone wants to send me some questions or I can just write them down now, like they want to, you want to know um, how they got out the word about the new. Yeah, I think, I think I really like to know if, if the county is sending applicants there. That would way. be very helpful to know. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't it too late? Like by the time you go to the county with your plans, you've drawn up your plans. That's right. true. You're right. So we want, You're we right. want people to, Close the deal when they buy the, you know, or you know, the who, the the builder, the developer, or the or the home, or the you know, assuming a, you know, all the houses on my street, two of them were bought by builders, built and then sold, you know, and so right. it's really that targeting those folks too. Yeah, but you got to get in before right. you you go to the county. Well, yeah. it seems to me whenever a property um, changes hands, it is, there's a filing at, at the, with the county. Why can't the, the it seems to me that, that Matt can, or somebody can get a hold of any sales and you know who the person, the registered listed purchaser is and you send something to them. It's either the builder or the owner. And but aren't nice. the builders? I mean, if the builders before they're buying the house, they've already kind of specked out what kind of model they probably do. Oh, right? I mean, no, actually, that's not true at all. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. I mean, I think Sandy Spring has probably built more house, houses yeah. in the last 10 years than anybody. And what they do is they buy the lot, they offer the lot for sale, and then they build the house and, and work with the, um, yeah, the customer on okay. what that house is going to look okay. like. Okay. But even if it were the worst case scenario and some builder comes around and says, oh, this would be perfect for a huge house with a pool and, and I'm going to chop down those trees. And then you um, say, sorry, you know, these are the regs. 
no sympathy. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> those are the breaks, folks. Uh, it's a business. And yeah. yeah. I think that's right. And, and and the good ones like Sandy Spring, we, we met with them. We yeah, they'll know. Shopping around. You know, they do it based on the site and then ultimately what, what somebody's willing to pay for. But anyone what, who's gonna build has want. to know that there are rules. I right. mean there right. so then it's just find getting out what the rules word out. are before of you course. chop down trees. Right. Yeah. So then it's getting the word out to them. But if you sent a letter to a builder and said, you know, by the way, we a week ago you purchased this property. We wanted to get out well in advance to tell yeah. you all these regulations. What are they going to say? Uh, you know, like you didn't get to me soon enough. I mean, it's like, yeah. well, there are laws, you know. Yeah, that's Check soon enough. Yeah. I, I, otherwise, we're mind readers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it should be on the point of sale. Yeah, yeah. I oh, think, and I think there's a nice way of doing it where you say yeah. we want to work with you and we just yeah, don't yeah. want, you know, we don't want to come in at the end of the process and we're right. coming in at the beginning of the process and, you know, we welcome people to our neighborhood, but there are, okay. you know, things have changed and yep. you need to, you need to consider <coughs> your neighbors. No, I think it's in the tone. I agree. Yeah. 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 And, and I guess we also have to make, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. What about, I mean, people who do major renovations without teardowns? I mean, we have to get to them too. Because they're going to get an architect and all that stuff. And yeah, but they, well, they live here. They yeah. live here, oh. yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So hopefully so there'll be they, enough education of the people who live in town yeah. that before they undertake a renovation and architect, they know what the, you know, what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do and what their site, you know, allows. Right. And I think given if we're doing these letters, I mean, it sounds super straightforward to all of us. And I think it is. However, I think we just have to factor in or some plan that is makes it a realistic given at least the current, you know, configuration of town resources, just that it's not another of those things that doesn't happen, but that it does. So whatever that yes. requires, I don't know what that requires, but right. um, it's, it's currently if we said, hey, let's ha make this happen. I think it wouldn't be realistic. So, but you know, it's pretty easy. Like you're driving down a street and you see a sold sign. Or for sale sign, it's pretty yeah. easy to know. Well, that, I agree that um, right. No, I'm not. Happening. Yeah, it just needs to be yeah. another thing that the town organized. does. That's all. Right. Yes, right. that's all. Yeah, you can't just count on seeing it on the street. Like you have to be organized and get the ones that are doing it. And yeah, yeah. And the name of the new of the purchaser. Right. right. And I, mean, I don't know if there's something from the Estat Maryland site that can be pulled. You know that it, there you can sign up for notifications or something. That would be great. I, you know, I don't know if the yeah. state has that, but I mean, you know, those are popping That's up all the time, right? That would yeah. be ideal. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Can we uh, move along then to resources? That's me. Is that me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're still on. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So we've been working um, on the, uh, the rain gardens and more tour on September 26th. And we now have, I was going to try to get a map ready to show you all, but I didn't really do that. I mean, the map is here, but not, anyway. Um, what we've got is we have five rain gardens that are going to be on the tour for sure. We have, we've asked 10 other um, property owners to share with us either conservation landscapes or permeable pavers. And the way we try to do it is to cluster people so not just to have them spread out all over town but to have certain clusters around the rain gardens so that people could just maybe walk around a little bit in one area and check this out um and uh what we've gotten so far we finally we sent out uh invitations to all we sort of mapped out where we thought you know we decided on 15 properties to invite five rain gardens have accepted and then five other people have also said yes i'm in and there's five people we're waiting to hear from so we've got some conservation garden like conservation landscapes and permeable pavers and of course there's permeable papers everywhere but we want people to be able to be there and answer questions and talk about maintenance and stuff like that so um we're um we got some feedback from people regarding the time of the um of the tour because we were sort of proposing maybe four hours and it's like, they can't sit around for four hours and wait for people to come. So, I mean, it might be nice for, for the attendees to say, oh, I can go at 12 or I can go at three, but no, we're gonna have to kind of narrow it down to like a two hour window to be more realistic for the 
the property owners. So um, it's funny because Julie and I today were saying maybe two to four, and then these people I'm working with are like, 12 to two would be really good. So <laughs> I don't know. Can I, hey, hi, is it possible yeah. to stagger them to have, you know, one group? Uh, I was thinking Sorry. that even it would as I be was from you know twelve to two, and the next group would be from twelve hmm. to that four. It's not a bad idea because also then yeah. the other problem was that some people who are doing it want to be able to go on the tour. So right. um, maybe we can do some staggering. I don't know how complicated that would get, but I'll write myself a note and think about that. Yeah, stagger the groups. Okay, um, and um, what was I going to say. Uh, and what about publicity? Since we're getting kind of close, how are we going to get folks there? How are you advertising? What's the? We got to figure that out. We 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 do want to have signs, but we also I mean, we're going to Jan is away right now, and we're going to get together and talk about. So we should. Did we do it? Some... I would think emails, right? Or lists are. What are you say, Julie? Well, I'd start with a list serve just so that people can. Yeah. Begin to think about it. And if you have some of the homes that will be um, open, that would be good to say, here are some of the uh, homes that you can go see and that a schedule will be coming out. Um, but just so that people are thinking about it. We should have a town journal posting. And that, of course, would have to be like yesterday. Uh-oh. Turn yeah. it in. For... Well, yeah, I forgot about that. We did the town journal once, but now we well, Yeah, save it. the date. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, so you always need to do it six weeks in advance. Of, I mean, that's what we're basically saying because we're not going to be in time for the September town journal. It'll come out like the next day afterward. So we need to have it in the the town journal that comes out at the end of this month, which for which they'd like to get the notices like on the 16th. But I think they could squeeze it in. It's going to be small. So, um, so oh, Haya, can you can you call the um, Barbara and get it in again? All right. So what, yeah. what do we want to say? Should, I mean, is it just to save the data? Should I have more information uh, at this point? Well, I don't know if you if you it'd be nice if you had some of the you know where that it will be or some other little bit of information just All to right. make it slightly different. I don't think you have to do much. Just I'll try to call Barbara to our contact her tonight or tomorrow, and then um, I mean I won't call her tonight, but and um, yeah, and then, okay. Especially since a lot of people are gone over the summer and probably didn't see the last one. Okay. So. And then whatever we put there, I put on the list serve for now too. I think we should yeah. go door to door with a map. Just drop it on people's houses. That would be advertising yeah. and useful. I mean, the way this survey publicity was done was amazing. I mean, it was blanketing, you know, it, it was a true get out the, get out the, not the vote, but you know, get out the word. <laughs> G-O-T-W. That would be closer to the time, right? I mean, that would be. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like drop leaflets a week before people have saved the date theoretically. And it's, you know, if we split it up, if everybody on the committee took their own block yeah. Yeah. yeah and we could have yeah. a map you know a map of where right that's what i'm thinking a map yeah yeah okay so yeah we'll try to get out so that makes sense rather than i mean i was thinking on that day we were thinking oh well we'll have a place to get maps no we should just bring them to everyone's house yeah yeah, ahead of yeah well we should yeah we could drop them off at people's houses and then have a few more that everybody at every house that's on right. the tour, they have a few more in case people have lost them or whatever. And send yeah. it as an attachment to the listserv, which now is, yeah. has, it's very easy yeah. now. It's much easier on the listserv than it used to be with the- Oh, you can, or you can do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you do, you just so double click. You can do a town blast, right? Cause that's a little, not- Oh, you can do town blast and listserv. I would do both for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. For give it yeah, to Matt. I mean, not, look, he does not, it Friday, Fridays, right? So yeah. Yeah, so we should try and get it in the next few Fridays. Yeah, put it every Friday till we do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and won't Matt send out an email blast to folks to the town? We could have an announcement. It's every, announcement. Friday, yeah, it's every Friday, he sends. It's every Friday. Yeah. Okay. Is that what day, it's the, is the following, if it's the it's Friday? It's on a Sunday, the 26th, so you would want it on the 24th, at the, maybe on the, and the Friday before. 
Well, so, yeah, it's a little, we don't want to do that now. I mean, that's no. too early. Yeah. No, that, that's closer to the date. Yeah, the yeah. Town announcements. Just the whole the date is in the announcements that it, coming up. I think that is helpful. Yeah. And the, well, I would do and both. I mean, oh, and, and the announcements. Not in announcements now. Okay. I mean, okay. they say you have to tell people something what seven times before they hear it, right? So. <laughs> and like honestly, broccoli. there's a lot of noise, right? It's a lot of noise in our lives, so you know, got to keep keep putting it in there. <laughs> so. Um, anything else for resources? Is that it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, wait. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and, and unless anyone has, oh, we talked about staggering, maybe we have to figure out the best time. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. And you could, you're probably going to have to stagger and, and maybe do that sort of geographically, like, right. Yeah. Stagger the ones that are close together in the, the 10 to 12 and the other part of town do them. So people yeah. have time to go to the other, the other part. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, the update on the center for low impact uh, project. Yeah, so uh, lucky for us, the this is Neil Weinstein and the study that his center is doing of Somerset. They're doing regular updates to the town council. And so Matt sent to me their, the slides they use for their update. Now they are gonna be in touch with our committee next week, I believe. And they're going to be presenting again at the September council work session, which has not been scheduled yet. So when it's scheduled, if we want to sort of sit in and see the rest, but I'll show you the slides. I'll share my screen and show you the slides that um, they showed. So, um why is this not advancing there okay so um the they've taken all of the survey information and both mapped it and put it into a database so they're going to be creating a um, dashboard for us so they've got the survey data they have mapped the survey results They have added in um, lot area, impervious area, tree canopy, roof area, open space. Um, they've put in the type of impervious area. Mm. And they are going to be able to come up with a map that's superimposed on a topography. And I think they're gonna add in soil information of some type. I don't know how, how specific that's gonna be. It could be all be soil type B everywhere in town. Um, five foot exclusion zone from tree canopy. I, you know, I'm not sure what, what that gets you, but. That's a very cool look. It looks, it looks like yeah, that's exact art. <laughs> yeah, it does look like that. Um, but can you explain that tree canopy thing? Uh, what does that mean? I can. Uh, I cannot explain anything. I just know oh, that they're. Okay. Okay, you know, I'm this is what okay. they've presented. Okay. Um, I do know that. Uh, let me just finish this last slide, and then I'll add in some more information that they spoke about and Matt took down notes on. Um, so they're in their the midst of their data review. Uh, they're preparing the master plan. All of them are on vacation. I think this actually actually this week. Um, and then they'll have a portal for this dashboard um, ready by the end of August that maybe we'll be able to see when they talk with us, certainly at the September meeting. So let me just um, read you some more information about their plan. Um, okay, so their goal, it's to identify which properties are contributing to the larger flow they're gonna categorize every property either as receiving water from another property, independent from basically other properties or generating water that flows to other properties. So receiving, generating, or sort of out of the mix. Um, 
and I'm not, you know, I, I don't know how, how all of this sort of fits together into a final recommendation, but it, I, I think they're doing exactly the uh, data integration that was, that's what their contract is for, how it all falls out for them to be able to pinpoint where they should put green infrastructure would be most impactful. That's, that's the next step. That's what this is all aimed to do. Now, I was a little concerned when they made specific reference to the pool parking lot and I think it was the basketball courts or something because um, the town has done as about as much on public lands as it can do. It's already considered and put in rain gardens like at the pool. But Matt assured me that they, while they are looking at that, they are focusing most of their attention on this issue of where in the in the lot to lot drainage problems they there can be um, some sort of potential remedies. And so I'm hoping that we don't get some recommendation for another, um, uh, you know, rain garden at the pool because though that would help the creek potentially. That is. That's just not what we're after at this point. We want more than that. We want something uphill that, you know, can effectively help the creek among other things, but it also helps a bunch of our neighbors um, from lot to lot drainage. So I think all is on track. I, and the, the town council seems very happy with- okay. I have um, a question. What are they doing um, about um, folks who, maybe adjacent to those who filled out the survey and um, identified themselves as having flooding, but maybe the houses on either side did not fill out the survey. Are they going back in any way to, or is that well, something yeah. to, to try and fill in those blanks? I think, it, I don't know specifically. I would assume that because they're looking at multiple factors, including topography, that they're going to interpolate from the results and say, well, if this house on one side has uh, drainage issues and the and the house on the other side and the house in the middle is downhill from both, they it must have drainage problems, even if it didn't fill out the survey and indicate as much. So I assume that that's one of the reasons they're layering in so many different um, variables that are going to be part of the solution. I don't know that they're actually knocking on the door though and saying, hi, if you were to fill out this survey, what would you say? I don't know that they've talked. Yeah, I don't know if they've actually talked to any residents at this point. Okay. Maybe, um, I know they're all, I, I had, had reached out um, to Neil to see if he could actually come on our meeting, but he, he right. was not gonna be here. So um, I'll reach out to him um, next week when he's back and yeah. see to whether um, uh, they we maybe and I think in some cases we can help them fill out the you know those those spaces where we know there's flooding but the people just didn't get it in in time or were unable to complete it um, yeah. okay great that's really helpful I think um, it shows a lot of progress in just a couple months oh yeah yeah I was I think I think this is going to be very useful, um, a great resource for the town. Yeah, I'm actually surprised they were able to accomplish that in, in such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah me too. Okay. All right, uh, Trees, I think are next. And I know Brian had to leave. He had yeah, another. Yeah, Brian had to leave. Sorry. So, yeah, um, I can give you a quick update um, and just a caveat is I was away and then David, has, my husband, had uh, just had prostate cancer surgery. So, I'm not as on top of this as I should be. So, apologies in advance, guys. Um, so, anyway, I think I had told you all about the uh, code, proposed code that the uh, Parks and Natural Resources Committee had done. I spoke with Kristen Kana who's its chair, uh, we have, sh she shared with us the um, text of it. We are invited to review it. I think Brian, I need to con 
powwow quickly that guess that's not even a good word anymore but sorry um can we talk and uh, go over it and i think then we'd like you all to have your input it's the focus is somewhat different um kristen and i did agree that you know trees is you know their primary on this in terms of their committee mandate it's one piece of what storm it obviously trees are uh, relevant and uh, uh, affect stormwater, but are not the main thing. So we'd really be providing input, but they're very interested in us having input. And we both agreed it didn't make any sense for us to have alternate code that we're proposing. So their focus is, it's a bit different than what you know we had been talking about. So there's a more emphasis on a reforestation for you know even below three trees. Um, and uh, it also, it doesn't all to me also solve the issue of that we don't have the bandwidth for the kind of things that they're asking. They're asking them to do more reviews and more oversight, which, you know, we've seen wasn't happening in the first place. So I think uh, what I'd like is for Brian and me to go over and then, you know, have you all give your opinions as well. Um, but I think it's, it's not as, to me, at least as strong in terms of, uh, you know, tree, you know, tree preservation when possible, at, you know, um, so uh, anyway, so I will be just the next couple of weeks, hopefully, um, having you all take a look at it. I talked to Kristen, we talked about timing and agreed, you know, it wouldn't happen for September. So maybe October, if we can all have a uh, review before the October meeting, not September, um, if that works for everybody. Um, so that's uh, basically uh, it. And, you know, they had put a lot of time, they had delays of their own. So um, anyway, but she's, she's very open and interested in willing to just have us, you know, give input and opinions. So if anyone has any questions or anything, so pretty straightforward stuff. So, uh, yeah, so lots of town code changes, right guys? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Julie, do you want to talk about the writing and assignments and then maybe we can, I don't know if we can divvy some of that up right now or how you want to handle it, uh, but things need to start getting written since it's we're heading into September. Well, why don't I pull up what is there and how it is sort of divvied up? Um, let me. I, I personally, I'm, I just keep meaning to get to it and I keep not doing it. So I feel, yeah, I know there's some stuff that I need to do. Okay, so <laughs> let me just show everybody what it looks like. I gotta find it. Easy to find. Okay, you go to the Stormwater Study Committee. Draft final report in a folder in which there is only one Google Doc. Open that up. Okay, so it started out as an outline and the outline elements are still there. So there's a paragraph here that has my name on it that says, cover the topography and soils. Okay, so here is the text right below it in a just black instead of blue for the outline. And I've added in stuff with some comments about a few things that are gonna be extracted for appendices or whatever. Down to the next topic, which is, there it is too, drainage problems. And um, this is from the survey. So, um, what you see here underneath that blue text is simply the very top level summary items from the survey. And Brian and Ellen, you, you can see your name is there and you can amplify, take out what I've added and add more. Okay. Then we go on to um, water quality and nearby waterways. And I've added in, actually this should be black, and there it is. And um, I, uh, oh, there's item number four in the outline, what variety of green infrastructures were installed on town property? There is text there. So in all, there's now 10 pages of text that is just sort of pieced in here. There's not a lot of consistency in style or you know whatever that can all come. But here's the first place that I've got nothing basically. Um, oh, well, I do have a little bit. So Julie, you can see, I that, see that stuff yeah. on okay. climate gotcha. change. Yep. So got remember it. you had written some stuff on climate yeah. change yeah. months and months ago. I put that in, it's okay. not complete. There sure. it is. Okay. So, so does everybody it. see, uh, then then we're back to Julie G and, and I did some stuff on construction. 
Um, actually, Robin Barr was in here, added a comment. Uh, trees again. Um, Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, basically, it's just a cut and paste or add in. Um, you can work outside of this and then just cut and paste and stick something in the right spot. Um, long, short, doesn't matter. Um, Do you want an edit form suggested or just put in? Straight? Oh, I think we should just put it in at this okay, point. Okay, perfect. And then later we can do edits. Perfect. Just okay. very it's quick and yeah. dirty. Just gotcha. get, yeah. get content get in there. In there. Okay. And we can rearrange or amplify or whatever later. But I think it's important just to start to fill up these topics um, with what we have. So great. Okay, so can everybody, including myself, <laughs> take some time and get this thing moving along? And, and I think, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think we just want to get our points out. We can always, you know, finesse it later and um, edit and et cetera. But let's just, you know, you got to start someplace. Sometimes if you just start writing. Yeah. And I fun. think, you know, if you remember the outline, all of the recommendation stuff is just there in one big chunk. And if we could fill up everything up to the point of the recommendations, at least in draft form, we can come, you know, we can then, you know, worry about shaping that at some point and come to and then do the recommendations in one fell swoop and, and sort of fill those in. We obviously we we have we have a lot of thinking and work to do on those, but the other pieces, I think we we can pretty much get something in there on the outline. Ellen, when do you want us to do that by? Besides yesterday. <laughs> Can we say like the next 10 days okay. that everybody take a look and, you know, put something in? Yeah. That it helps yeah. to have a deadline because I keep thinking every day like I should do that, but then I don't. Yeah, so no, I know. That, that's why are. I'm asking. Yeah. Everybody here is guilty, but but Julie yeah. Greenberg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> other, other than Julie, is there it makes uh, us all feel bad. <laughs> is yeah, it makes me feel very bad, but very grateful as well. Yeah, my like gratitude exceeds yeah. my guilt. And I, I don't um, understand why Julie G has more names in there than anyone else, but uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, is Control. there? Is there? I'm wondering if before we get to the recommendations, it would be worth at least a brief summary of the process that we followed in in forming the research that we did, what we found, you know, leading us to if this is where we go, Town of Chevy Chase and Section Five is where we primarily focus, you know, our considerations, mm -hmm. and boom, here's our recommendation. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in the outline at this point about our process. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's yeah. yeah, a good idea to add it in. Yeah, I could take responsibility for that. And I'm also happy to um, to take a first crack at the regs table that we talked about. Great. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Who's <laughs> my, awesome. my obs obsessive compulsive need to create documents? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a I'm a list. Upset. I like tables too. I'm a matrix guy. person, so I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Ed. PowerPoint guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Even better. Okay, great. Um, I think well, that's it. That's it. Unless anybody has anything else, I have one last final thing. If uh, when it has nothing to do with us, when every when we've finished oh, stormwater. I just have one question. Any update on the money? Have we heard anything else about that? I have nothing have heard nothing since that they were getting the money. I haven't heard anything that they got the money and I haven't heard that they haven't gotten the money. Yeah. Was Robin supposed to be here tonight? You would think, but well, yeah. there you know, when Matt sends it out, he sends it to all of the Okay, I thought we had a anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah I just sent it to you guys, but Matt sends out the official announcement with the uh, um the link well, so all the council members are driving new porsches we know where that money went <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's my question it has nothing to do with anything are those tree mites gone or are they still <laughs> I, I have to tell you there was a hullabaloo at johns hopkins because 
David's about to go into surgery. All of a sudden, the nurse, the anesthesiologist, everyone is looking at these massive things on his arm, freaking out and saying, what is that? What is that? And I said, I think it's oak mites because I live in a town that has a great listserv. I literally said this. And, 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 and I said, I don't, I have no idea, but I, our listserv said it's oak mites. And then I point to my neck. I wasn't doing surgery, but just to show. And it's the same thing. So they're like, let's get the surgeon. Let's get the surgeon. So we bring him in. He's like, oh yeah, those are oak mites. You're going to have them for a couple of weeks. My mom has them. Everyone has them. But I got to tell you, it was like freaking people out because they're about to do surgery on this guy and has some weird skin things. They have no clue what it is until the surgeon showed up. So it was, it was I mean, it was amusing, wow. except, you know, you're not usually amused when you're about to go into Stressful. surgery. But yeah, yeah. But it was like, I have to say, I'm like count one for the Somerset list serve. I'm like, I think it's oak mites, you know, (laughs) and indeed it was. So that's all I know. Um, But then Patty Friedman sent something around from some friend of hers or, you know, who's of course an expert, but um, it said like two weeks because my daughter read and she's like two weeks. Oh my God. Because she's here visiting and now she has oak mites. Mine aren't as pronounced as they were like even a week ago. So that's kind of exciting, but uh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, all I know is we sent Johns Hopkins a tizzy. So <laughs> I walk my dog, and if I see an oak tree, I turn around. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So. And I have one in my yard, but it's way at the it's way at the back of the yard. So yeah, I just yeah, wondered because yeah. I haven't yeah. gotten bit yet. So I'm oh, just, you're lucky. I yeah, haven't either. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, ours seem to be subsiding, so that's pretty exciting to me, at least. So. Yeah, I think but the rain to, yeah. too is supposed to help. Mm, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I had one on my arm. I, I had a rash that was kind of expanding and I was like, oh no, is it Lyme? I mean, I was ready to go to urgent care. I was at the beach and then I saw the email from the oh, first post yeah. and I was like, oh, thank yeah. you. You know, so I, yeah. No, I'm very grateful to list serve. Honestly, I would have yeah, had was, no clue. Really, I mean, I didn't even think it was anything. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what it was. It didn't really yeah. look like Lyme, but it was like, I got to go. And yeah, then I, yeah. I, I was hours away from getting in the car and going. So oh. All righty. Okay. Anyway. All right, everybody. All right, thanks great. so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all the great work. Yeah, bye. 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 Have a good night. Bye. bye.